good evening. Uh, thank you all for being here this evening. Um, it is, let's see, 7.01. So I'd like to call this meeting to order. Uh, it is Monday, March 13th, 2023 at 7.01 p.m. And we are meeting at Grandview High School. Welcome to all of you in attendance and thank you. We appreciate you being here and being involved in CCSD. If you are able, would you please stand and join me in reciting the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you. And uh, Ms. McDonald, would you please read the land acknowledgement this evening? On behalf of this board and the Cherry Creek School District, I would like to acknowledge that this meeting is being held on the ancestral unceded lands of the Cheyenne, Arapaho, Ute, Ocheki, Sac Sacawi people who stewarded it, stewarded it for generations. The Ochechi Sacawan includes seven bands, so I would also like to recognize that over 40 additional tri <laughs> 40 additional tribal nations likely use this area for trade ceremonies and social gatherings. Thank you. Uh, may I please have a motion to approve the agenda for the March 13th, 2023 regular Board of Education meeting? I move to approve, I move to approve the agenda for the March 13th, 2023 regular Board of Education meeting. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Roll call, please. Aye. Aye. Egan. Aye. Garland. Aye. McDonald. Aye. Thank you. That motion carries. May I have a motion to approve the minutes of the February 13th, 2023 regular Board of Education meeting? I move to approve, move to approve the minutes for the February 13th, 2023 regular Board of Education meeting. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Is there any discussion? Thank you. May I have the roll call, please? Directors Allen. Aye. Bates. Aye. Egan. Aye. Garland. Aye. McDonald. Aye. Thank you. That motion passes. May I have a motion to approve the minutes of the February 24th, 2023 Special Board of Education meeting number one? Most, I move to approve the minutes from the February 24th, 2023 Special Board of Education meeting number one. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Roll call, please. Directors Allen. Aye. Bates. Aye. Egan. Aye. Garland. Aye. McDonald. Aye. Thank you. That motion carries as well. Now, may I have a motion to approve the minutes for the February 24, 2023 Special Board of Education meeting number two? I move to approve minutes from the February 24th, 2023 Special Board of Education meeting number two. Thank you. Is there a second? Any discussion? May I have the roll call, please? Directors Allen. Aye. Bates. Aye. Egan. Aye. Garland. Aye. McDonald. Aye. Thank you. That motion passes as well. It is at this time we will have individual comments from our Board of Education. If, uh, Director Garland, if you would start this evening, please. Thank you, Director Bates. Thank you to the Grandview community for hosting us this evening. Special shout out to the Grandview girls basketball team for winning the state championship on Saturday. And keep the applause going. I would like to also celebrate Sienna Betts, a Grandview student athlete who plays forward on the state championship team for winning the Gatorade player of the year. <laughs> While celebrating this young women's team and honoring Women's History Month, I would like to encourage our community to support women's sports. As parents, we do not pay discount fees or get fewer practice hours when we sign up our daughters for sports. We pay the same fees and put in the same hours as we do for our sons. Our daughters show the same effort and commitment 
And we as parents attend every practice, every game, and every event in the rain, sleet, snow, or blazing sun. However, in college and professional sports, in professional in professional women's sports, there is a drop in drastic disparities in fan attendance, facilities, opportunities, and pay. Support women's sports, especially at the highest and most elite levels. Buy season tickets, attend the games, buy their jerseys, tailgate. tailgate. Be a fan of women athletes. Congratulations to Mr. Zach Ruford for being named Smoky for Maine for being named Educator of the Year at Smoky Hill High School, and high five to all the other educators around our district who have been selected as Educators of the Year within their respective buildings. Our community, hosted by the Cherry Creek Schools Foundation, will come together on Thursday, March 30th, at the Broncos Training Facility to celebrate all the phenomenal teachers in our district and raise money to support our students and teachers. The foundation continue, continues to issue grants that make transformational change and impacts for our students. Funds were awarded to Cimarron Elementary to create a Zen Den and Sensory Area. In addition, gym teacher Mr. Brady Barker created a shoe libra library, excuse me, which ensures that all students are able to participate in physical fitness and gym class. He assembled shelving and collected new and gently used tennis shoes of all shapes, sizes, and colors, which even included several pairs of Jordans for students to borrow if they wore snow boots, shiny Mary Janes, sandals, or their Sunday best shoes for their noted PE day. Mr. Mr. Barker exhibited a growth mindset, whole well-being, and equity by solving the problem of students sometimes forgetting to wear proper footwear on gym class day. Kudos to the Poulton family for celebrating 50 years of learning. And on a more, and on a more awesome note, the entire school know the, knows the lyrics to Marvin Gaye and Tammy Terrell's Motown classic of Ain't No Mountain High Enough. And they sung it during their celebration. The Cherry, Creek, the Cherry Creek School District is working alongside the Arapahoe County Sheriff's Office to provide gun locks to parents free of charge, no questions asked. It's an effort to address the growing concerns around gun violence, which includes teen suicide. Approximately 300 gun locks were distributed across the district through the Sheriff's Office. Superintendent Smith reached out to parents and staff via email about the effort within, within the following letter. The Cherry Creek Schools community every year we lose students and staff in the Cherry Creek District to gun violence, including suicides by firearm. Suicides are on the rise across the country, according to CDC data. In CCSD, suicide threat assessments are also increasing. Firearms are now the leading cause of death for children in the United States, according to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. Responsible and safe gun storage in the home can save lives. A state gun storage law took effect on July 1st, 2021, that requires Colorado gun owners to securely store their firearms when not in use to prevent access by unsupervised juveniles and other, uh, other unauthorized users. Any single step we can take to prevent suicide and save a life is a step worth taking. The Arapahoe County Sheriff's Office has provided gun locks for CC CCSD schools to hand out free of charge to families. The gun locks are available in the entryways of schools along with pamphlets on how to use them. No questions will be asked when families ask, access the gun locks. That concludes my report. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Garland. Um, Ms. McDonald, would you please go? Thank you, Mrs. Bates. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for being here. Thanks to all who make this evening possible and comfortable and safe. Last month, I, along with my colleagues, attended the 2023 All-Stars Awards celebration. What is the definition of All-Stars? An All-Star definition, uh, one composed wholly of outstanding performers, performers or players. This is an event where some of our outstanding employees are nominated for going above and uh, above and beyond their, their job description in a good way. When, we, when work is a pleasure and you go that extra mile each day, it becomes your signature on your work just because you enjoy what you do. Thank you again, Cherry Creek All-Stars. You shine brightly. Also, I'd like to acknowledge Mr. Jasper Armstrong, a partner in the Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Office. Mr. Armstrong was presented the Education Champion Award by the Colorado Black Caucus 
of School Board for his amazing work. Congratulations, Mr. Armstrong. Every two years, each board member is assigned to be a liaison to the to district committees. My committees this year, number one, that I'm assigned as a liaison is to the Medical Advisory Board. This board meets approximately four times a year. The Medical Board is a multidisciplinary team of medical professionals. They, along with our Chief Medical Officer, Mrs. Officer, Mrs. Weinrob, are concerned with the overall health and safety of our district. The second committee that I meet with is the Long Range Planning. This is a group of citizens and district employees that are concerned with the future of Cherry Creek School District. The committee evaluates issues including new constructions, renovations of existing facilities, and attendance boundaries. The Long Range Committee is chaired by Mr. Dave Henderson, Deputy Chief Facility Operations. It has been my pleasure this year to represent the board on these two committees for the 22-23 school year. March is a month we celebrate women's history. It started as a one day in 1909. The first Women's Day commenced on the one year anniversary of the garment workers strike when 15,000 women marched to protest their working conditions. The celebration has evolved, and every year we celebrate month long the contributions women have made to the United States, and we recognize their specific achievements in a variety of fields. As I did last year, I'd like to highlight, highlight a woman of history in Cherry Creek School District. Tonight, I will speak of Dr. Joan Grady. Dr. Grady, before working in Cherry Creek School District, was an administrative assistant at St. Mary's Academy. Upon coming to the district, she went from administrative assistant to assistant principal to principal and ended her 34 years in the district as director of special projects from 1975 to 1991. When she left Cherry Creek School District, she became curriculum director for McGrell McRail Institute. In 1998, she became superintendent in Idaho Springs. She was a consultant expert for Colorado Department of Ed, peer reviewer for various programs in the U.S. Department of Education. She was also a Fulbright scholar. Dr. Grady was a noteworthy school administrator and a woman of history in Cherry Creek School District. As I wrote about Dr. Grady, I began to think about these five women seated here, or these four plus me, <laughs> seated here. And I thought perhaps one day, the women seated here will be celebrated in history as the first all-female school board in Colorado. And to toot my own horn, maybe I'll be remembered as the first African-American female on the Cherry Creek School District Board of Education. In closing, I was honored to share in the 50th anniversary as Mrs. Mrs. Garland and I were there together for, for Poulton Elementary School. The highlight for me that evening featured some of the first students who have since returned to become teachers at Poulton. And they, um, shared their experiences back in the early 70s and how they uh, how they really remembered that time in history for them. Um, it was a great job that Principal Angie and her staff and the community did that evening. It was over 200 students, parents, and community members um, at the celebration. And also, a big shout out to Overland High School on their successful Make-A-Wish Week 2023. Overland Blazers in the course of 12 years have raised over $130,000 to bring to fruition the dreams and wishes of many children battling life-threatening illnesses. This year, Overland High School doubled their goal of $10,000 to 
20,000 plus. Congratulations, Blazer. And that concludes my comments. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. McDonald. Ms. Allen, would you please? <laughs> Yes, thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Bates. Uh, good evening. It's great to be here. Thank you to Dr. Lisa Roberts and Grandview for hosting tonight's event. I was here last week for Miracle Week. Um, it's a lot louder with 3,000 students cheer, cheering, cheering on a couple of really great kids they were supporting. Um, totally different experience, um, but still great to be here. Uh, thank you to the security and setup teams for all your behind the scenes work. Uh, my colleagues already talked about Women's History Month and International Women's Day. Obviously, those two events have a special place in all of our hearts. Um, so I, I'll just contribute saying a couple of weeks ago, Cherry Creek put on a great women in industry conference and um, I got to participate um, both as a lawyer and a, a um, a board member, and in talking to the small groups, the the biggest takeaway from the girls I was talking to was it was it was a supposed to be a snow day that day, or or that the everybody was anticipating that it was going to be a snow day, and as soon as I said I was a member of the board, they all looked at me and said, "So you're at fault for not calling this snow day?" And I quickly said, no, if you have questions about snow days, please refer to Superintendent Smith. <laughs> and that was the end of that. It was an incredible conference with some um, local leaders of industry that our, our young ladies and, and girls had the opportunity to chat with and um, got some great tips on um, ways to pursue your own, ways to pursue your own dream and your own passion. Uh, this week, we're also celebrating Cherry Creek Reads, and my colleagues and I will be spending lots of time in elementary, middle, and high schools uh, reading some great, great books, and um, I, I wish it wasn't only a week, but we look forward to that coming up. Uh, and then we also extend our congratulations to all the incredible theater and music programs. Uh, this, I think this week wraps up all of the musicals that took place and um, amongst all of us, I think we've seen all of them, if not all of them. Uh, the, and the kids as usual do a phenomenal job. I think that Broadway uh, should come here when they're looking for some new talent. And finally, Go Grandview High School girls basketball. I know you already cheered for them once, but uh, it doesn't hurt to say congratulations on the back-to-back -back state champions. And also congratulations to the Endeavor Academy boys basketball team who took top honors in the gold division at the All City Urban League Championship. And I also just wanted to briefly mention um, our mental health. Um, there's never enough time to talk about our mental health and well-being of our students. Uh, recently, a Talkbeat article discussed the work our district is doing with our children who experience loss of a parent or caregiver. Last week, our district began a pilot program with Grief Care uh, for with with the Grief Care nonprofit Judy's House in Aurora to host group therapy for elementary students. The program continues to expand to meet the needs of our elementary school students. And I thank our district and Judy's House for collaborating on this program and thank you to the Cherry Creek Schools Foundation for funding the program. And once again, I just wanna take another moment before we head out for a spring break to recognize our teachers and, and educators whose tireless work and dedication to our students often goes unnoticed. Thank you for everything you do. We see you and we appreciate you. I hope everyone has a lovely spring break and thank you for being here tonight. Thank you, Ms. Allen. Director Egan, please. Thank you, Mrs. Bates. Good evening and thank you to Principal Dr. Lisa Roberts and Grandview High School for hosting us here tonight. And as always, many thanks to our safety, security and technology teams.
It is Cherry Creek Reads Week, as Director Allen mentioned. This is such a joyful celebration, and it's a treat to be in our schools sharing the love of reading with our students. Reading aloud to kids builds empathy, creates a lifelong love of reading, improves language and listening skills, facilitates important and difficult conversation, activates and empowers imagination, and it's fun. This year, the district chose the book, Someone Builds the Dream by Lisa Wheeler and Lauren Lang to celebrate this week. The story encourages children to think about how things are built from planning to reality and all of the people involved in the process along the way. In between reading to classes at one of our elementary schools this morning, the principal told me, I love this book. Everyone can see themselves in it. I wholeheartedly agree. On the topic of building, last week was International Women's Day with the theme, Digital, Innovation and Technology for Gender Equality. It was also Women in Construction Week. We are happy to celebrate all women in the industry, including our students, employees, and partners in the infrastructure engineering pathway. And congratulations to the Cherry Creek High School Women's Swim and Dive Team for winning the 2023 5A State Championship at the Veterans Memorial Aquatic Center. Last month, I spent a very chilly day at the Capitol with a couple of my colleagues. For me, being involved in public education means not only being part of our own district, but in education policy and important work across our state and nation. Take time to familiarize yourself with your legislators and our state capital. I'm so proud of the Cherry Creek High School community for raising over $51,000 towards the Gabby Kraus Foundation bags of fun throughout this year's recently completed Power Week. The foundation's mission is to deliver a bag filled with toys, books, and games to every child fighting a long-term or life-threatening condition. The foundation was established in 2005 in honor of Gabby Kraus, a six-year-old who found joy in her bag of fun during a battle with brain cancer. Although sadly Gabby lost that battle in 2004, the foundation bearing her name works to fulfill her wish that every seriously ill child can benefit from the power of play with their own bag of fun. Next month, Arapahoe County Sheriff Tyler Brown is going to swear in a new therapy dog for Cherry Creek Schools. Bear is a chocolate lab who will join Riley, our black lab, as the two new therapy dogs assigned to Cherry Creek Schools. Bear's handler will be Deputy Candace Gray. The use of therapy dogs to support the well-being of students was a recommendation that came out of last year's CCSD Mental Health Emergency Task Force a group of students, staff, parents, and community members who came together to address the mental health crisis impacting our schools. We can't meet to, wait to meet you, Bear. We are also thrilled to announce the district's 15 winners of the John Irwin School of Excellence Award. The elementary schools include Altitude, Challenge, Cherry Creek Charter Academy, Cottonwood Creek, Dry Creek, Greenwood, Heritage, Homestead, Rolling Hills, Willow Creek, Bellevue, and Cherry Hills Village. Campus Middle School was also recognized, as was Cherry Creek High School. This award, presented by the Colorado Department of Education and established in 2008, is given to schools across the state that demonstrate exceptional academic achievement over time. Each of the awardees received an exceeds expectations rating on the academic achievement indicator of the school performance framework, otherwise known as SPF, reflecting exceptional performance in math, English language arts, and science. Congratulations to the hardworking staff and dedicated families for making these schools a testament to outstanding growth and achievement of their students. We will hold a formal recognition during our April Board of Education meeting. In conclusion, in recognition of Women's History Month, please take the opportunity to educate yourselves on the countless number of women who have made a mark on our society and world. Find ways to continue celebrating the women in your life as well. I'll leave you with a thought from Ursula K. Le Guin. We are volcanoes. 
when women offer our experience as our truth, as human truth, all the maps change. There are new mountains. Have a wonderful spring break, and this concludes my comments. Thank you, Director Egan. All right, good evening again, and thank you again for joining us. Dr. Lisa Roberts and your Grandview crew, thank you for hosting us this evening. And as always, thank you to our technology team, safety and security, and our setup crew for making sure that we are set and ready to go for our meetings. Unfortunately, I did miss um, Grandview's Wish Week this year, but I will say I do appreciate having a full head of hair this year rather than that bald head from last year. So on Saturday, February 25th, our Human Resource Department held a job fair to recruit uh, for certified staff. Over 300 people attended that job fair. After many interviews, 23 intent to hires were given. Many applicants came from, our local, from other local school districts. I would like to thank our HR department and our union for working so diligently to change our pay scale. I believe that the number of applicants speaks loudly for the importance of this move. Thank you. This past week, I attended our SEAC committee, our Special Education Advisory Committee. While wow, this was a powerful meeting, the presentation was on executive functioning skills. And not only does this apply to children with disabilities, I believe this presentation would have been worthwhile for any parent. For example, the presenter spoke about the difficulties that many parents have getting their children out the door on a regular basis. If we only put into place a few easy steps, we could make life easier on both ourselves and our children. When we realize that our children are struggling in this area, just a minor adjustment is where you keep their coat, their backpack and shoes could make a huge difference. If you think that this is something that you might that might help your family, I encourage you to go to the SEAC website and look for their presentation. Every year, our schools, along with Special Olympics Colorado, host an inclusion week. During this week, the schools host many fun events to include both typical and special needs students. It is a time where everyone is valued. I was fortunate to attend a basketball game recently at Laredo Middle School. The ILC students took on the staff and what a game it was. I came into the gym expecting a small crowd. To my surprise, the stands were completely full. The students had prepared signs and cheered during the entire event. Smoky Hills Unified Palms came to perform during halftime and Laredo's dance team performed as well. Watching the excitement on the athletes' faces as they made basket after basket was enough to brighten anyone's day. Oh, and by the way, the final score was 30 to 8. The athletes smoked the staff. So the next time you hear about a unified game being played or a track meet being run, any of the unified sports, I encourage you to attend and try, just try, not to smile. So as mentioned before, I was able to have a huge smile today as I was able to be in classrooms reading to children. Because that's what we are all here for, is to serve our, our children and our schools. Um, it really made our day. And I told the children, because it is closing in on St. Patrick's Day, that they are the pot of gold at the end of my rainbow. So I wanted to celebrate them today by reading with the children, and I look forward to um, hundreds more this week that I get to read to. So that concludes my comments tonight. My colleagues have already mentioned a lot of things that I myself has also done as well. So I will keep that short tonight. Um, so at this time, we are thrilled that we also get to have students here to speak tonight as well. We love to hear our students' voice. And since this is why we're here, could we have Max Grice from Trails West to please approach that microphone? Do I turn it on? Oh, I it's think it's on. on. It's, okay. There you go. Hi, my name is Max Rice. Thank you for having me here tonight. I'm in fifth grade. I have been at Trails West since kindergarten. One thing I have learned is STARS behavior. STARS stands for safe, trustworthy, attitude, respect, and success. 
At Trails West, it is important to have a growth mindset because sometimes you may fall down, but we pick each other up, and if someone needs help, friends and classmates will help. Also, if you make a mistake, you can't get down on yourself. Engagement is an important core value because my amazing teacher, Miss Swang, encouraged me to engage in math. And now I raise my hand to ask questions and answer the problems. Equity is another core value at Trails West because we don't make fun of kids with disabilities by the color of their skin, their beliefs, or gender. At Trails West, we are taught to treat everyone equally no matter what. Relationships with our teachers, friends, and classmates are our power at Trails West. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Max. Sounds like you have a pretty good teacher. Yeah. <laughs> She's over here tonight watching, right? That's pretty awesome. So um, can you tell us about some of the good relationships you've made at your school? I have a really good relationship with a friend that I've had in four of my classes, and we play football together, tackle football, and we go to a lot of places together and then another friend that I've been in a class only once one year with but we have a great relationship and we usually get along well sometimes we fight but we get over it fast and a lot of my friends are just amazing and I feel like Trails West helped me get my friendships definitely that's great that's great do you have a special relationship with your teachers as well yes, yes. i have been with miss wang for three years wow first grade third grade and fifth grade wow that's awesome all right well thank you so much for being here tonight you did a great job thank you all right thank you Okay, and now if we could have Brielle Thomas from Falcon Creek, please. Good evening. My name is Brielle Thomas, and I'm currently in eighth grade at Falcon Creek Middle School. I'm here to talk about how Cherry Creek's core values have affected my life in and outside of school. To start us off, I'm going to talk about growth mindset. Having a growth mindset has helped me tremendously in school. I make sure that I will always learn something new based on a mistake. A few weeks ago, I was working on math and I made a tiny mistake. Luckily, my tutor in Avid has assisted me and told me that we don't want to make a mistake. The next day on the quiz, I almost made the mistake but remembered what my Avid tutor said. Instead of doing that mistake, I decided to take a different route. And that is just one of the many ways having a growth mindset in school has helped me. In my classes, teachers come up with unique ways to keep their students engaged. For example, my teacher, Mrs. Olin, used superheroes and villains to help try to try to figure out a distance between the hero and the villain. This turned out to be the new start of the Pythagorean theorem. Um, I really appreciate a teacher who can make the learning experience more fun and engaging. I always seem to have better understanding of the content and perform better in the class when it's more exciting. As a black female in Cherry Creek schools, I never felt unequal to any student, whether that was with my gender or my race. Uh, I was nominated, or excuse me, I have access to advanced classes. I was nominated to be part of the first eighth grade leadership group class. I'm in advanced science, and I also use my AVID class to my advantage. I've also had multiple opportunities from the school and the district itself. Last month, I attended the Women's in Industry meeting and currently here tonight. Thank you. Um, I appreciate growing up in this school district, being a second generation Falcon Creek member and future second generation wolf, which leads me to whole well-being. Whole well-being is about my physical, mental, emotional, and social needs. Whole well-being is currently very important to me. I just found out recently that I have to have two surgeries on my hip due to me being a competitive dancer and the anatomy of my body. Since I've recently discovered about my surgeries, I have not been able to dance and that took a big toll on me mentally and physically. Physically, I make sure to take care of my body using PT to my advantage, whether that's once or twice a week. And I take care of my body reading every day because it helps me escape from the world and make sure I have a break. 
how I take care of myself at school is going to the counselors or stepping into the hall when I need a break. Luckily, my teachers understand everything and the certain setbacks that happened in my life to let me allow this to happen. Having a strong relationship with my teachers also helped me get through difficult times. Due to my injury, I've missed multiple days of school and homework assignments. My teachers luckily helped me prioritize certain assignments to make sure I'm on track with the curriculum I missed and the things that we are working on in class. I also started to reach out to my peers for assistance. This has resulted in multiple new friendships and relationships. As you can see, the core values of the Cherry Creek School District have impacted my life in and out of the classroom. I would like to thank all the members of the school board and the Falcon Creek staff for having me here tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Brielle. You did a great job. Um, sounds like you're a really busy person. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> you have a lot of activities going on there. Um, so, and and you were at the Women in Industry, so I'm I'm guessing you saw Miss Allen there, possibly. Yes, I did. Very nice. Good. Um, so, um, I'm glad to hear that you are really focusing on your um, whole well-being. Mm -hmm. I think that is great. Um, I um, I appreciate that you are going going to have surgery soon, and um, I hope those go well for you. Thank you. Um, and I, I really I love that you said that you are escaping. You get to escape by reading. Yes. I think that's so important. And I think you know, but when you're having that surgery, I think that's going to help you even more to be able to go through that. But keep in mind that there are a lot of people out here who will be thinking about you and making sure that you're healthy and you're well. Thank you. So, thank you. Thank you. Okay, now, uh, Mr. Zane Cole from Grandview High School. Hello. I assume this is the part where I act like I've been here before and thank everyone for coming. So thank you all for coming. My name is Zane Cole, and I'm a student here at Grandview. I'd like to start off by thanking Dr. Roberts for the opportunity to share with you my experiences at Grandview. She is one of the many people in this school who has placed a good deal of confidence in my abilities. I find comfort in knowing that there is supportive faculty all over this building as well as district, that there are people who truly have my best interest in mind. When I think about relationships, I think about the important friendships I've made at Grandview, great times with teammates, and cool teachers like Miss Manchester, who I know I can always go to. People like Miss Richards, who showed me that I can have a lasting impact on those around me while maintaining a humble and authentic attitude. I think about the people who saw in me what I couldn't always see in myself, like my counselor, Dr. Dotson, who reminded me about the importance of maintaining a growth mindset. Little did she know, she was, she was unwittingly counteracting my impending senioritis. She challenged me to take more rigorous courses and helped me realize that life doesn't get easier and that it's not my circumstance, but my response that defines me. My lived experience with equity really comes into focus when I got involved with students organizing against racism. People like Mr. Ortega and Ms. Solis pushed me to constantly consider that we all have unique stories and circumstances. And because of that, I seek to treat others with understanding, civility, fairness, and dignity. Thinking about well-being, I can't help but recall the times Mr. Learned had to deal with my annual ankle sprains. However, it wasn't just my physical well-being I learned to prioritize, but also my mental well-being when Mr. Cimento would invite me to take a moment to meditate and be still in the chaos that is teamdom. Finally, when I consider what it means to be engaged, I credit NHS for the many opportunities to make a positive difference for others whether making blankets for the homeless, supporting Wish Week, picking up trash around my campus, volunteering at my church, and many more, I'm grateful for the chance to be a part of something bigger than myself. This is just a tiny sampling of my more recent experiences as a student in our district. If I had more than two minutes, I could tell story after story of impactful experiences since moving to the district as a second grader. Overall, although my experiences have been positive in our district, I can't pretend like our district is perfect. But I hope all members of CCSD, from the students all the way up to the superintendent, realize the beautiful power of community. Through this lens of hope, I can see not just a district, but a family, a family I've been blessed to be a part of, a district I call home. Thank you. Thank you, Zane. Um, it sounds like you've had some um, 
great, very supportive teachers here at Grandview. Oh, yes. So I had one of my children came to Grandview. So yeah. I know that my other four went to the opposing school down the street. <laughs> anyway, um, well, I like to hear again, you have been very active with lots of activities in school um, and giving of yourself as well to others in your community. Yeah. I think that's a great, that is a great um, mindset to have and to think about other people. Thank you. So, um, so, um, so you've already talked about um, and Miss Dodson and your, and she pushed you a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm yeah. glad to hear that she did that for you. Yeah. Was it a good thing that she pushed you? Yeah. So for sure, definitely. All right. As I said, the senioritis. So. <laughs> so, um, can you tell us? Do you have plans for next year? Um. After yeah. I'm, I'm still getting them hammered out, but um, definitely college. Um, that's the plan, and take it from there. Okay. Do you have an idea what you're thinking of studying? Um, I'm not sure yet, um, okay. but hopefully I figure that out soon. It's okay. Lots, lots of people go to college and don't even know what they want to do yeah. ever. And they graduate. And some people, even old, don't even know what they want to do. So, yeah. all right. Thank you again for being here. Thank you. Thank you. Well, Mr. Smith, you get to follow those kids again. <laughs> You need to change the order, Ms. Bates. Uh, Max, thank you. Thank you for being a leader in your building. I appreciate that. Modeling, you know, your your star um, PBIS motto. So thank you for being part of that. I had the opportunity to see one of your um, assemblies and see kids getting awards and teachers getting awards. So thank you for modeling that. And thank you for being honest that we don't always get along. Sometimes we, we get in arguments and sometimes we get in fights. But the ultimate piece is that we get back together when all that is over. So I appreciate that. Brielle, thank you. Thank you for being a leader in your building, being the first one on your leadership team. That must feel amazing and awesome. Uh, thank you for putting yourself out there and taking a risk. And, and I too, with Ms. Bates, will be thinking about you and making sure that your surgeries go well. Um, but one of the things that I think you model that you shared with us is that when you, when you get down mentally, there are people that can help you. And I don't think everybody takes advantage of that. So the more that you can continue to tell your friends that when you're sad or when you're depressed, there's people who can help um, because we want to help before it gets bad. So thank you for that. Zane, I don't even know where to start, brother. You know, thank you for all that you do. Um, one of the things that you shared was realizing that it's bigger than yourself, the things that you do. I'd ask you to continue thinking about that. One of the things that I share often with the principals that I mentor is it's not about you. It's about the people that you serve and, and the people that you want to improve or make better. So, so thank you for leading that as a high schooler. You know, I appreciate that. I see great things for you and good luck wherever you go. Um, you know, life changes, the journey changes. So don't feel like you have to figure it all out right now. Right. I'm sure I'm, your parents probably don't believe that, but I'm probably going to get in trouble with that one. Uh, but good luck to you. I, I appreciate it. Thank you all for being here. You did amazing. Uh, my comments are brief, Ms. Bates. A couple of things that I want to share. I want to echo um, human resources and thank them. We had over 350 teachers come to our job fair. We did have 23 um, intent to hires and half of those were teachers of color. So the work between um, our union and our negotiating team is gonna make a difference in the Cherry Creek School District for our students because we will be able to get teachers to come from other districts to be part of our family and have a more diverse teaching staff so our students see themselves in those who teach them and those who work with them. I'd like to thank my superintendent's advisory group this past month. Um, Mr. Giles, my assistant superintendent, were able to have a conversation with them about suicide and real conversations around mental health and what do our students need in order for us to support them? And they're honest and they're brutally honest. And we have to be thoughtful about what we do. These have a huge impact on our kids. Talking about social media, talking about not ever being able to get away from those who maybe have differing feelings about us. Um, it's hard, it's hard for kids. And when I asked, do you get anxious when you put your phone to the side? Every single person in the room raised their hand. When I asked the adults, do you get anxious when you forget where your phone is? They all raised their hand. 
We have to be thoughtful about what this means for our whole well-being, for our staff, for our students, for our community, and I appreciate the advice of our superintendent's advisory group. We have one right back here if you want to raise your hand. <laughs> I've asked them to come to board meetings so they can see some of the different parts of our school. And lastly, I'd just like to thank our staff. We're two thirds of the, the year done. I can't believe it. Um, people have been working hard. I hope people get a restful spring break and come back ready to go because the last part of the year is super fast, super fast and super fun. I know it'll be a blink of an eye and we're shaking hands of kids who are graduating from our school district. So with that, those are my comments, Ms. Bates. I'd like to introduce Mr. Koenig, Jason Koenig and his team for the presentation this evening. Thank you, Superintendent Smith and Board of Directors. Tonight we'll have a uh, brief look into the Office of Information Systems um, and what we, some of the stuff that we do within the district. So the role of Information Systems is we look at, um, we're really providing leadership and support for all things tech. Uh, there's so much technology in the district. The sprinkler system doesn't come on without technology. We have cameras and internet, wireless access points, computers everywhere. Um, we have tons and tons of technology and we provide that, that leadership and support for all of those pieces. We work collaboratively with our schools and departments on how they use technology provide instructional and back office tools to help them provide, you know, help them select um, the best tool for what they're trying to do. We gather and synthesize a ton of information. We have lots and lots of data. You can imagine from all of our different systems, um, lots of data that we have out there. The next three, we try to offer relevant real world experiences. We serve as a transformational, transformational mechanism um, and we empower students and staff with technology. Technology is a magnifier, as Superintendent Smith alluded to, cell phones, um, social media can be, you know, an amazing thing. And so it magnifies good, right? We see it used in, in really positive, powerful ways. It can also magnify bad, and we see it can be used in very, very damaging ways. Um, we try our best to get um, staff and students on the, the, the right side of that magnification, looking at their process, what they're trying to accomplish, and then introducing technologies to try to help um, make things better. Information Systems is made up of 60 employees across six departments, and we'll dive into what these departments do. The first is projects and operations. So this is a, a team that reports to me. Um, we have something like, like 80 projects just this year alone. So we have a lot of things going on. Some are small, some are really, really big. Um, and so having project management in place to make sure we are on time, on budget, we know what we're delivering, how we're delivering it, who's delivering it is really, really important. Um, so we have project governance with that. We have guidance and oversight. Um, we even branch into other places trying to help make sure that the district overall is running smoothly in terms of projects. We have a lot of technologies I talked about. Um, I think we're up at around 80,000 different computing devices in the district. Um, so that includes all the staff devices, all student devices. We have labs, tablets, lots and lots of stuff. Um, and all those things need to be tracked. We need to know where they are, who they're assigned to, how often they've been broken. Um, and so that's really the technology asset management um, that we do. So there's a system that we use to track all those different pieces. Um, and so that's a little bit about the projects and operations team. So I'm going to introduce WeTran, our Director of Technology Services, to talk about what Technology Services does. All right. Thank you, Jason. Um, as Jason mentions, my name is WeTran. I'm the Director of Technology Services. Um, so what is Technology Services? It is the service delivery team, and it, it is our infrastructure team. So the service delivery team is comprises about 15 employees with one manager. Uh, service desk, I can barely read that. <laughs> Sorry. So the service delivery, service delivery team of health service for help desk is our first call resolution center and routing center for all technology support requests. Over 24,000 requests received in the first semester, which is more than all of last year. So they've been pretty busy. That's been coupled and um, because uh, I don't want to say exacerbated, but because of the one-to-one -one project and the maturation process and that, and there's those devices. Uh, and then they received HDI, which is Help Desk Institute Support Center Analyst Certification, which is the first for Cherry Creek in that, for that team. The field support team is all the techs that go out to schools and support all of our admin buildings. They provide on-site support, 
and repair and support 80 plus thousand devices, as Jason mentions, from computers, tablets, projectors, printers. If it's in the classroom or in the office, they support it. They assisted in the recycle of over 90,000 pounds of old technology equipment this year alone so far, and we've recouped over $160,000 so far. Uh, and they are all CompTIA A plus certified technicians, and these, this is the team that supports the Board of Ed. So they're over there in the corner, um, Paul and Josh tonight. And then we have the infrastructure team, which encompasses our network operations team and our server admin team. The network team provides all of our internet, our telephones, our radios, security cameras, digital signage. Right? They support over 18,000 endpoints. Um, so far, their internet firewall has blocked over 5 million threats. That's for this first semester. And they maintain a 4,000 node network. So that team alone has six employees. So each employee is kind of responsible for 3,000 assets by themselves, which is quite a feat. Um, the server admin team uh, provides data center server and system administration services. They support an administration of over 100,000 staff, teacher, and parent accounts. They are finishing up the data center refresh and modernizing it to a new HCI model. It's getting a little technical, but with over 300 servers. They implemented multi-factor authentication to help protect our staff. And then our core value for technology services, overall it's honesty, integrity, and that aligns with the, our district values. Um, by We will engage our customers, employees, and company resources with the respect they deserve. Moving on to teamwork and collaboration, where we build our relationships with those we serve. Our quality and customer service oriented is making sure that we provide equitable outcomes as it pertains to technology and possessing a growth mindset and demonstrating a strong sense of service to fellow employees, students, and parents. And then lastly, we have a great workplace, provide a safe, healthy, and caring environment that ensures whole well-being. All right, well, thank you, We. I'm Dale Lindberg. I'm the Director of Software Applications or Application Services for the district. Um, what is Application Services? Essentially all the software that we're using throughout the district. Um, we've broken that down into three different specific um, areas, if you will. One being the business information systems. The other is the data or the data team. And then finally, the application and development teams. So our biz team or business information systems team is really the, the support of all the, the back end systems on the, the staff side. So um, Oracle is our Oracle ERP is probably the biggest prog project or endeavor that we have for that, that team. But a lot of the operations and stuff that you don't see in the background going on is really what's handled with the biz team. Uh, next up is the data team. Um, Really, the data team is um, comprised of about eight eight people plus the manager, and we have Ann Dozen here, the manager tonight. Um, they're responsible for the majority, if not all, of the state and federal data submissions that we have when we do all of our reporting. Um, that's 18 plus submissions throughout the year, and the biggest one being that of October count itself. Um, with 53,000 students and 80 cells of data, all that work constitutes well over 4 million data points that they're looking at to report for just the October count um, in itself. All of that's tied to our funding. So um, in that, it takes them a good two months, if not longer, to really coordinate, put all that data together for that submission. They also do duplicate resolution. There are times where students are claimed by other districts and they go and arm wrestle for us to win that. Um, they've got some pretty big biceps because they generally win about 60% of the time. So um, in addition to that, the data team is responsible for the data warehousing and reporting, um, security, core requests, and then any OCR reports that are out. The application development team, or the SIS team as we call it at times, is um, managed by Phil Moyer, who's also here tonight. Um, 
and essentially they're responsible for um, over 50 of the supported products and integrations that we have. Um, of those integrations, 32 are in Clever alone. Um, so any of the applications that you see, PowerSchool, Naviance, um, any of the enrollment products, Schoology, all of those applications are supported through Phil's team. And then our core values, trying to align with what the, the district's core values are. We, we take a very agile development approach to those uh, where we focus on individuals and interactions, working software, customer collaboration, and responding to change. I don't think we could have had a better example of this, um, especially when we're looking at the responding to change as we looked at what we did when we went through uh, the COVID time frame where we got all the devices out, we went virtual and all that. It was just a great example of the hard work that this team put together. So finally, I'll end with a quote tonight. Um, our goal is to provide software and data in an accurate and concise manner so staff can make data-driven decisions in order to maximize benefit to students. So thanks, Ann, for that. So the thing about technology is if um, we do our jobs really well, no one knows. It's when we do it poorly that uh, things come undone and get to get to the internet, everything breaks. So um, this is just a snapshot of some of the pieces that we do within technology and the teams. Um, we could talk about tech for hours, but I'm sure the audience doesn't necessarily want to hear that. Some of the big projects that we have right now, um, during the pandemic, we went one-to-one -one, um, with board's approval um, and, and voters to the mill levy. There was a, a, a big initiative to get our students right connected. Um, and as you heard me say many, many times during the pandemic, no one in their right mind would approach it the way that, that we, we did um, because of the pandemic. So we have approximately 55,000 student devices that are in this system, and we did that very rapidly. Um, over the, the course of a, of a few months, um, we got double the amount of devices um, that we'd ever had before. So now we are on our second cycle and we're learning as we go, right? Normally people would go in and they do one year at a time over the course of three or four years. They would learn how to do it. They'd learn from their mistakes. Um, the system would adjust and they would be great by the third or fourth year. And we did it in three or four months. And so we're still learning some of those pieces. We're in our second cycle where we annually take out 12,000 devices um, that are removed from the schools and we bring 12,000 devices in. We're in the tipping point of doing that now. Um, in fact, one of the resolutions tonight is to talk about getting that first, that, that second batch now of student devices in, um, and we will reclaim at the end of the school year, get those devices out. So a lot of moving parts in the system. Um, that's just the student devices. So industry standard, looking at the number of devices we have, uh, you know, private sector is probably 71. And so, so for every 70 devices, there's, there's one person. If we include everybody in the schools that supports our computers, which is you know, much wider, we're still at like a 600 to one ratio. So a lot of computers um, with staff to support this. So it's a big, big, big job. We're currently evaluating what, it, what that support structure looks like um, as we learn. Like I said, normally you'd go through that process and we are learning as we go, trying to figure out what is the amount of breakage? How do we support that? How do we work with the schools to make sure that the kids have, students have devices in the right time? Um, and so we're evaluating a lot of data points right now and working with, um, with finance, with um, various teams to look at what we can do to, to make that better. Another big initiative uh, during the pandemic was, was our bond 2020. We are currently in the process of a number of these pieces. Um, technology, you know, I, I call it technology years. It just doesn't age well, right? We replace our phone every few years. Uh, same thing with our, with our servers, with our infrastructure. And so we're kind of always looking at what is the life cycle of those devices and, and renewing those. The data center upgrade, we generally have as part of every bond that we go through um, some sort of, of refresh on the data center. Even though we're heavily in the cloud, um, we still have a lot of parts and pieces to controlling our network. Um, On-prem servers, we have hundreds of servers in our, our data centers. Um, and so we go through a refresh process. We are complete with the first part of that, or with our data center upgrade um, for Bond 2020. We move into network and firewall and wireless upgrade. Um, many of these pieces we have already in motion, and we are currently in the process of replacing over 2400 um, wireless, sorry, 2600 wireless access points. So this is how we connect to the internet throughout the district. So lots of work there. 
our last big project is uh, VoIP, which is voice over IP. It's our phones. Um, we will look at replacing our phones. We're at the early stages that now working with our um, our partners to understand what the landscape looks like, what options we have, and we'll start that that uh, bigger selection process shortly. In 2022, we went through the process. One of the things that our, our parents go through is parent forms. Um, we'd have, we've had that around for approximately 10 years, and we did a major refresh uh, this last summer. So we added additional language support. So we have five languages, um, six languages that we six languages that that as a parent comes in, they can select the language and it translates everything in there. Um, not using A, we've had this all translated. So they get to go through parent forms in in one of those languages. We also support additional contacts um, that kind of meets the the needs of our our um, various family combinations that are out there. Um, we've also worked to have name and gender change capabilities that are that are part of this the solution, modernizing SIS and kind of recognizing where we are. Lastly, another thing that we we uh, received from the pandemic was a massive increase in the number of cyber attacks on. Uh, public education. You can see that chart uh, on the left-hand side starts in 2016, so pre-pandemic, about middle of the way through, it's at 2019, and you see it skyrocket between 2020 and 2021. So it, just, it, it keeps going up. Um, now we're in 2023, and we see this trend going way up um, in terms of, the, and this is just the attacks on K-12. So what's that mean? Well, if we don't protect the systems, we don't protect our data, protect the networks, protect our identities, um, there's a massive um, cost to that, can be anywhere from you know, tens of thousands to millions of dollars. There's a reputational cost that can occur, and finally, there's a loss of learning impact, right? When we have these events occur, technology goes down, it's so integral to all that we do that we certainly feel the loss um, and feel the impact when that, that occurs. So we do a pretty good job of protecting our systems. Um, this chart's hard to read, but all those are, are attack vectors just across one month that we see. Um, and so we have artificial intelligence that is monitoring, you know, for phishing and tries to protect our staff. We have a next generation firewall. Mr. Tran talked about multi-factor authentication, protecting when we access the network. Um, educating staff, looking for um, how they how they get on the network, make sure they're aware of what phishing schemes are. Um, we get lots of emails saying, hey, I didn't realize this was happening and point that out to us. We do some internal phishing to see how vulnerable we are. Um, we are moving towards what's called the zero trust architecture. Won't bore you on the details of that. And looking at good passwords, right? All these things have to be in place in order to protect our, our systems. Um, one interesting note is on the orange bars there, the biggest one at over 2,500 uh, is impersonations. And so this, what we see often is uh, an impersonation of a principal sending messages out to say, hey, can you help me? Uh, I, can you can you send me some a an Apple gift card? Can you go do this or that? I um, mean, it's really easy to find out a principal's name because I just have to go to the website and make a fake account, and away I go. And so we see a ton of that, but we block them. Um, we block all the stuff that's up there, whether it's on the network um, or, or phishing that's coming in. So lots of stuff in the in the cybersecurity arena um, that we protect our students and staff when they're on our network. And with that, open for questions. Uh, thank you. Thank you to um, Mr. Koenig, Mr. Tram, and Lindbergh. Thank you so much. Um, we really do appreciate all that you do for our kids, our, our students, our families, our staff. Um, and, you know, we know how important it is to have you all and ready to go because um, we've often had our computers just not work and then you touch them and it works for whatever reason. It does. So, um, so we, we really do appreciate you and I will tell you that um, the value and the respect that we had during the pandemic and how quickly you were able to get us to one-to-one -one ratio was um, significant. So we appreciate that. So let me um, have Miss um, Garland start with questions if she has questions, please. Thank you, I do have uh, a couple questions. Um, so you talked about, um, Superintendent Smith talked about how um, 
phones impact our students? Um, are we seeing the same impact from their devices or do they look at those from having computers or do they look at those issues differently? That's a that's an excellent question. Um, I don't know if there's any way we can measure that directly, but in general, when we introduce technology, um, I think that you know the the students that we have are now digital natives. They've always grown up with technology in their hands. Um, we as adults look at that a, a, a different way, a certain way, um, and so we have to recognize we're in that spot. But I think um, that we do see in general, right? that technology has both that good effect, right? And so there's amazing things that can happen, but it does have that negative effect, whether it's the fear of missing out, um, bullying in new, you know, new ways, um, those things are occurring. So whenever we introduce more technology to the equation, that will increase. We don't have a way to, to measure that directly um, right now. Thank you. And then also um, with issuing the, going to one-to-one, -to -one, um, is there any cost savings from having to purchase textbooks or is it about the same for subscriptions to information or how does that work? Right out? now it's the same. Um, I think it's one of those things is it, it, if we were moving in you know, one year at a time, we'd have that advantage of learning as we go. The, the speed at which we went, we didn't necessarily have that shift, that, that associated shift with technology in that way from a digital books perspective, but it is something that, that we are looking at in terms of how we help support. And that'll be you know, kind of a, 2.0 version, um, what do we do to move towards that and, and really provide uh, whatever it is, educational resource in that different way? And then my final question, and you, know, you, you and I have talked about this before, um, is there a point where we may be able to move as we reclaim computers and students are graduating, are we able to send students that would like them or families that need them home with some of those reclaimed computers either for free is ideal or at a very small cost? And that is something we're looking at as we um, look for how we, we shift with um, the devices currently. Um, we, we do have them covered right now and they're, they're funded through the mill levy, so it's taxpayer dollars. There's certain rules that come up that when we have taxpayer funded you know, product going back, but we've talked about uh, different ways that we can have families purchase them or if they contribute along the way, what that looks like in the end. And so that's something we're looking at currently as we shift, um, shift in how we handle these devices. And then, excuse me, finally, as a mom of four with three still in the district, I just want to thank you for the uh, updates on those forms because having to fill those out four times was just like the bane of my existence. I was one of those parents that you kept emailing saying, please fill this out because I would start one one day and then have to do another. But I just really appreciate that update. Thank you. You're welcome. That concludes my questions. Thank you, Ms. Garland. Uh, Ms. McDonald. I don't have any questions this evening, but I do want to thank you and your department for your expertise and all that you bring to the Cherry Creek School District. I didn't pay attention in my IS class. I'm glad you did. <laughs> thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, and Director Allen. Thank you. I echo my colleagues' clients, uh, colleagues' comments. Excuse me, um, about just how when we talk about having a growth mindset, how you were able to get everybody in our district up and running during COVID was just uh, just blew my mind. So thank you for that. Um, I, I had a I was reading a news article recently about another school district. Um, who is teacher, the, a whole bunch of teachers' information was hacked and bank account information was disclosed and then took 58 days to get notice to those teachers involved. Um, and I think it, just for my peace of mind, just hearing whether or not you have a plan in place for preventing that or if something happens, how do we make sure we're protecting our teachers or whoever's information is disclosed? We do. Um, unfortunately, we have gone through similar experiences where um, we've had massive attacks where, um, you know, it's directed at a school, they've released information. Uh, you know, if people are going to willingly give it out, it's really hard. It's part of why we put two-factor in place because I can give my password out, um, but with that two-factor in place, you can't really get in and so it protects it. Part of that's moving to Oracle. Um, we, you know, we have a district around us, a large district that just had a massive attack. Um, and they're just trying to, to figure out what's happening. Um, and so we immediately reach out to them. One, can we offer support? Uh, two is, can we learn from your mistakes? 
right? Because we have a lot of stuff um, that are for similarity. And so we look for how we can learn from those pieces. Um, we try to do our best to, um, we can't stop it, but we can sure as heck put up a lot of barriers to deter folks from doing that. Once, once it goes through, it's about containment, isolation, and then we'll respond to what that is. We work closely with risk management and other groups, legal, um, to make sure we understand what the law is, but where our responsibility is. The, the first thing I heard is when it's 55 days to notify, gosh, that just, that's way too long. Um, by that time, that is an, an eternity in, in cybersecurity crime. Um, we have engaged on a, new, on a number of occasions with Homeland Security, and so we have their, their direct numbers. We've had uh, Homeland Security agents, Secret Service on site within 20 minutes um, to assist us. So those are our response. 55 days is, is way too long, way too long. about what you do because I think it's running very well. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Okay, Director Egan. Before, but thank you. And your response during COVID was exceptional. I had a um, two of my kiddos going through at that. My other two were done with Cherry Creek Schools at that time, but it, just the response in Cherry Creek schools and how it looked different from other districts and the colleges my kids were at. It was great, just very appreciative of how nimble you were on that. I, I was talking to a childhood friend last week and it was so interesting. He owns a um, technology and a computer company. And he, we were just talking about how quickly this all changes with AI now and cybersecurity and just to, keep up with all of it is really impressive. You do make it look effortless. I, I, it brought to mind the book, Someone Builds the Dream. It's the dream team. <laughs> I do have one question about the, your recycling efforts, and I, I referred to this before, but wondered if you could talk about that. I'm talking about the subscribers. So, so our recycling program, we have two vendors, one is mainly for staff and the other is for students. And so all of our assets, technology assets in the classroom, go through a, uh, a process of a school submits a ticket. The ticket is examined by our transitions program for those students. And so the transition program pulls out all the devices they need for that program. So they have first priority and first pick of all the devices. And then once those devices are, um, are picked up by that team or that team says, no, I'm not gonna take printers, we don't do that. Uh, they send that ticket to my team and then I coordinate with the vendors to either destroy those, recycle them or resell them. And then that's where we get, recoup some of the costs for the device that we purchase. Thank you. And thanks again, I appreciate you being here. Okay, thank you. Um, I have one other comment for you tonight. Um, I received one of those emails that appeared to be a phishing email. And so I, um, you know, I, I looked at it and I thought, oh, this is not right. So I immediately send a note to Jason and think this might be something fishy. And so by the time I got a hold of Jason, his team had already removed the email from the district email. So they were already on it. So I know that they were doing their job that they should be doing. And I really didn't need to send it to them, but I like to give them a heads up when I get that stuff. So I appreciate that your guys are on it and that we don't know really what you guys do over there. We love the heads up. It's uh, <laughs> the, the team and the systems we have in place now are pretty fast. And so they, by the time we're notified by someone and we engage with the system, it's usually going, I got it, we're good, we're good. And it's taking care of it right then. Yeah. All right, and then um, I have one other question. We were talking, um, Ms. Egan was talking about um, recycling. Um, and I think last year we had a recycling program for staff, is that correct? We did, yeah, it was our first. We did a pilot uh, in the summer with staff and allowed staff to bring in, using the same um, kind of mechanism, the same vendors, we were able to offer it for staff. Um, we is currently looking at expanding that um, allowing for more staff to bring in devices. Um, so this is bringing in technology they've got at home, right, whatever, and uh, providing those to our vendors. Great, that's awesome, that's cool thank program. you. Thank you, I probably have some I could unload to you. Yep. So, <laughs> all right, Ms. thank Bates. you. Ms. Bates, can I do one thing that I forgot to do in my opening comments? Surely. 
So we have our Director of Food and Nutrition here, Ms. Kim Kilgore. So first off, I just want to say thank you for all that she does every day in the Cherry Creek School District, but it's also school lunch appreciation week so or month so i just wanted to put a big shout out to her for all the work that she does that i forgot to do earlier so. that's awesome thank you it's been hasn't it been school breakfast week this past week or so so all right thank you at this time it is time for audience comments it is at this point in our meeting that we make time for members of the audience who have completed the online public comment form prior to 12 noon today to address the Board of Education. For everyone to be heard, please limit your comments to a maximum of two minutes. A buzzer will sound at the end of the two minutes and a microphone and audio will be automatically muted. Each speaker may only speak once during public comment. Speaking time may not be shared between speakers. This is your opportunity to make comments to the Board of Education. In accordance with board policy, it is not a question and answer session. Please confine your comments to matters that are germane to the business of the district. Further, please recognize that students attend most of these meetings. Any speaker whose statements or behavior are unrelated to the business of the district appear threatening or unsafe or are inappropriate for K-12. Students may be interrupted or warned and their opportunity for comment terminated. Audience members who speak are asked to do so in a respectful manner, and the audience is encouraged to listen respectfully. Any speaker or audience member that disrupts the good order of the school board meeting, including the speaking time of others, may be asked to leave. We are very interested in your feedback and will listen carefully. On behalf of the board, I want to thank you in advance of your comments for taking time to come to tonight's meeting. Mr. Koenig, would you please call our first group as i call your name please line up behind the podium in order and if you can uh, remember to state your name at the beginning madeline horn rima wadan al-assad rebecca kim brian mckinney Um, Madeline Horn, um, thank you, school board, for all you do. Thank you, Cherry Creek, for your pathway of purpose. The focus on equity, growth mindset, whole well-being, relationships, and engagement is so important for our children. As I'm sure you are aware, tensions are high for minority groups in our nation. This week, anti-Semitic flyers were dropped through my centennial neighborhood. Dangerous protesters have been appearing at our LGBTQ events. Our children are watching. Cherry Creek schools have these great core values, but we need to voice those values and speak out for the minority populations that are needing louder support right now. I don't know how to suggest helping every minority group, but I do know that March 31st is National Transgender Day of Visibility. This would be a great time to speak out by communicating with the Cherry Creek community that you see your transgender students and that you stand behind them in these uncertain times. It would be a great it would great be a great time to send out supportive messages and ed educational information to families on this day of visibility so families can start conversations in their homes and find the external supports they may need. If mental health and well-being of the whole child is our priority, we cannot wait until yet another tragedy occurs to recognize the need for vocal and visible support of our LGBTQ kids. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Rima Wadan. I'm an alumni and parent of the district. Um, today, I come as a representative of my community. Um, our community will be celebrating Ramadan uh, next week. Um, Ramadan takes place for one month, and it's a holy month for people who are of the Islamic faith. Um, Muslim students, staff, and faculty will be abstaining from food and water. We respectfully ask that schools within the district be on notice that students that are observing this holiday for this month will be tired, may be dehydrated, and if students are attending classes in the evening, that teachers be aware of um, if they are like sluggish. Please allow students to sit out physical activity as needed, um, visit the nurse if they need to rest, and we ask that schools provide a space for students if they choose to sit out at lunch. Second, I want to thank the Board of Education for allowing the recording
recordings, but I res uh, respectfully request that the parents' comments be left out of the recording. This is namely because parents are being targeted, teachers have been targeted, their face and comments that are here at the board meeting have been displayed on parent advocacy groups in the district. And it's confusing because some of these advocacy groups say the name Cherry Creek. And so please allow that to be taken out of this context. Um, last, I want to thank the board, um, and I also I want to thank our principal from Campus Middle School, Sestal, and the Equity Engagement Committee um, for being able to step into the, um, our group from the past. They actually stepped into our space when parents were actually threatening our space, taking, taking space from our parents, and I want to thank them for um, being there um, to protect that space for parents. Um, I want to make sure that we are holding space for people who support DE&I work, both parents, teachers, and images. Um, um, should not be seen, and I want to make sure that our, we are continuously to hold, hold this space for our people. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Rebecca Kim, and we have two daughters at Grandview High School. Today, I went to Cherry Creek website, Cherry Creek School District website, with fresh eyes. What was my first impression, and what message does Cherry Creek School District want me to receive? Dedicated to excellence is the header on every page, and that is the message we want to convey to every student, parent, or community member. I would therefore expect excellence to pervade every aspect of communication and interaction with our students in our community. Any new project or endeavor should be measured by asking if it will ensure excellence, and when once implemented, it should be assessed on whether excellence was achieved. All of our students should be at or above grade level. To me, that would signal that we are dedicated to excellence and we should be holding ourselves to the highest standards and we should expect that of our students. I believe in our students and if we set the bar high for them, they will rise to meet it. Unfortunately, we are doing the opposite. We spend time providing passes and excuses for ourselves and our students. Students do not get a zero for failing to turn in work. Instead, we give them 50% because we don't want to discourage them or make them feel bad. Why bother having a dress code or set standards of acceptable behavior, such as a tobacco-free or vape-free zone, if we don't adhere to or enforce them? What messages are we sending to our students? Our daughters have had some amazing teachers and their common traits are high standards, holding students accountable and consistency. These teachers are more about identifying and expressing expectations and assessing the outcomes of what students do have control over rather than focusing on race, class, or gender, something students do not have control over. It is an approach that seems to be setting their students up for success and one that truly shows a dedication to excellence. I again respectfully request that our board show us the plan on how we will prove to our community that and our parent. Thank you, your time is up. Good evening, I'm a, a parent in this community and I wanna spend my time advocating for the humanity and the safety of teachers in this district. You know, my, my stepmother was a public school teacher for 30 years. My mother was a special education teacher for 35 years. I've seen the blood, sweat and tears that she put into care for not just her kids, but everyone else's kids as well. In fact, she put so much into her job as a school teacher that not even one month after she retired from the school district, she collapsed and passed away while doing community service. At our own school, my own school that my kids attend, we have a teacher that had a stroke and less than 60 days later, he was back in a classroom, not because he needed to be, because he wanted to be with his kids. So when I see members of this community hop on social media, and Director Smith, it's not just kids, now it's adults, hop on social media and target and attempt to intimidate educators in this district, I take it personal. We have teachers that I've taught through a pandemic put only, not only themselves at risk, but their families as well, their children, their spouses, their friends. We have teachers that do whatever they can to connect with students and make them feel valued and safe. We should applaud their efforts and not seek to intimidate them with online toxic and homophobic and juvenile social media posts. So what can we do? Well, we need to show up and call out that toxic behavior every single time we see it. And whether it's by 1,000 or 13,000 or 20,000 or, or 42,000 votes, we need 
to show them that hate, racism, homophobia, and the targeting of educators in this district will not be tolerated. And it's not welcome here. Not here, not now, and not ever. Thank you. There's a base, that's all we have for tonight. Thank you. All right, at this time, we will move into our consent agenda. Before we move on to the consideration of the resolutions, are there any resolutions board members would like to pull or discuss? Okay, seeing as there is no discussion, may I have a motion to approve the consent agenda resolutions 23.3.1 through 23.3.11. I move to approve the consent agenda agenda resolution number 23.3.1 through number 23.3.11. Thank you, may I have a second? Any discussion? Okay, roll call please. Directors Allen? Aye. Bates? Aye. Egan? Aye. Garland? Aye. McDonald? Aye. Thank you, the motion to approve the consent agenda carries. All right, the, uh, the only other business we have is to uh, tell you our next remaining. Our next meeting will be Monday, April the 10th, 2023 at 7 p.m. at Laredo Middle School, 5000 South Laredo Street, Aurora, Colorado, 80015. Um, thank you again for attending tonight's meeting and please keep yourself and your loved ones safe. I hope you have some um, time to enjoy uh, the upcoming spring break. And remember, the best way to be informed with actual facts is to attend meetings at your local schools and at these board meetings. So we hope to see you all in person next month. May I have a motion to adjourn tonight's meeting? Move to adjourn. Is there a second? Okay. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Directors Allen? Aye. Bates? Aye. Egan? Aye. Garland? Aye. McDonald? Aye. Thank you, that motion passes. This meeting is adjourned.